is uh, it is used to identify applications applications or here applications identification clearly in fact there are different ways like uh, first uh, signature application signature <coughs> proto wall decoder and heuristic And important point here is like in app ID, there are two uh, major two types of uh, like uh, uh, protocols, application layer protocols. One, TCP-based applications, TCP-based applications. For example, HTTP, maybe SMTP, Telnet, FTP, HTTPS. They all are. <coughs> etc they all are tcp based applications it means they all use tcp as the transport they all run above tcp and there are some other applications they are basically udp based udp based applications so <laughs> udp is based application for example even your uh, tftp software or maybe your dns it uses <coughs> tft uh, uh, udp uh, protocol and there are a lot of other protocols like SNMP, etc. So, uh, point here is, in case of TCP-based application, what happens? Like, let's let me take the pen here. Okay. <clears throat> so, if here <clears throat> there is a firewall, Palo Alto firewall, a client will see here, <clears throat> Internet Cloud. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's say I want to uh, block or deny uh, maybe Telnet. I, I don't want to allow Telnet traffic through this firewall. But what happens? Let's say this is a client machine. Client opens a TCP connection to any IP address. Let's say 12.0.1.28. Telnet is uh, not allowed by the security policy on the firewall. Destination is here somewhere around like maybe over the internet cloud is my let's say a router IP address is 12.0.1.28. So in Telnet it uses TCP as the underlying protocol because Telnet runs on top of TCP protocol and in TCP what happens client machine first sends a TCP SYN packet. SYN packet like IP header and TCP header only no payload right no data in it then server or maybe the router responds with SYNAC which is acknowledgement and then the third packet goes to the server which is IAC once TCP negotiation is done connection is established then the next packet which is telnet data right telnet data <coughs> or, or, or the First telnet packet is sent by the client machine and this packet now will have will have data in it. It means now after three way handshake, the first packet what client machine sends will have IP, TCP and as well as data in it, telnet data. Okay. Now this application IP at, uh, app ID will get triggered now and app ID will look at the layer seven data and uh, calculates or computes signature from this application protocol, matches is locally stored signature database, and if it matches Telnet, so firewall understands is Telnet traffic and as per the security policy, Telnet is not allowed. So ultimately, this Telnet data or traffic will get dropped here. But problem with TCP connection or TCP based application is what? Uh, excuse me, sir. At least, huh? Uh, can you please repeat that again uh, when the data transfer is getting initiated? Hmm. <clears throat> so uh, my point is keep to control TCP based application like whether to allow or to deny. Of course, there has to be a security policy on pa Palo Alto firewall, but Palo Alto firewall can block or deny any application traffic, TCP based application traffic. Once it receives a packet 
with payload in it, data in it, because to apply app ID, there has to be data portion, right? Along with other header like IP and TCP header. So my point is that TCP based applications cannot be uh, uh, controlled before three way handshake. Before three way handshake. Because once handshake is completed, sorry. Let me run and delete it accidentally. So once three way handshake is done, so TCP SYN, SYN act, then again act, TCP connection is established. Up to this point, firewall will not be able to control this traffic, will not be able to allow or deny, will not be able to uh, identify application because there won't be any data in this TCP SYN, SYN act and act communication. But once TCP connection is established, then the very uh, first telnet data packet comes here, like arrives on firewall. Now this packet will have IP header, TCP yeah, header beautiful. and data portion in it, which is payload. Now firewall will look at layer seven data, will perform deep inspection inside this data and matches this locally stored signature, maybe protocol decoder or behavior, which is heuristic or pattern. And once it identifies that is telnet traffic, and since security policy doesn't allow telnet traffic, so what will happen? This telnet request will get dropped here, right? So uh, now you may understand like the problem here and problem is what? Without uh, receiving a packet with payload, firewall will not be able to identify application. It means application can be denied or allowed after three way handshake. But if I talk about UDP based application, so as you know, it's a connection less protocol. It's not connection oriented. There is no three way handshake, no TCP SYN, SYN IAC and IAC. So uh, UDP based application means the very first packet will have IP, UDP header and data in it, right? It means <clears throat> UDP based applications can be allowed or denied. At least application can be identified from the very first packet, first packet. So uh, TCP based application means like uh, uh, resource utilization in Islay, because three way handshake over there. So you may understand uh, that uh, at least at uh, that time, we have to firewall to process. So the TCP or UDP based applications, their <coughs> uh, controlling mechanism hai by the firewall is different because in TCP based application, if we look capture current even via shark se. So what we will get only IP and TCP header, no data in that. Right. That, so that means do you understand uh, like these two? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yes, Rajan, please. So uh, this is very clear that, you know, the firewall has, uh, you know, doesn't any, uh, doesn't have any control over the TCP stations, right? So it hmm. can only apply its security policies when the TCP stations carry the data, that is the application layer, right? Hmm, application layer. And before so that, before that, oh, sorry to interrupt you. Before hmm. that, uh, TCP based applications can be controlled uh, on the basis of port numbers. That is possible. That the is very possible. first packet, which is TCP SYN packet, can be allowed or denied on the basis of destination port number, right? Which right, is uh, right. which is a legacy firewall sort of thing, looking right. at the layer four header. So right. that is very much possible. So firewall right. can deny or allow uh, TCP based communication from the very first packet only on the basis of their port numbers. Port numbers, yes, that is logical right. because yeah, ah, yes. because negotiation has to happen on the port number. Well. Port number, That's exactly. Right. Yes, yes, correct, correct. And even the SYN packet will have IP header and as well as TCP header. Mm. And inside TCP header, there will be a destination port number. So on the basis yes. of that, TCP SYN packet can be controlled. But if I talk about the app ID, application ID, application identification, so that will come uh, into picture only once connection is established, mm -hmm. right? Because prior to that, prior to connection establishment, firewall will not be in a position to figure out like which application we are going to use or what kind so, of application is it. So, uh, yes, sir, like uh, if we are going to telnet from our uh, system to the remote uh, remote router, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So like uh, it will say that the port is open, but uh, we are not able to telnet it. Or uh, no, no. Let me let me put this in different way. Let me put it. In this way. No, let's say it's my Palo Alto firewall and here internet cloud. And these are router or any uh, remote system. Let's say it's IP address is this 12.0. I'm here. <clears throat> let's say uh, security policy states that uh, source uh, anyone from this IP uh, subnet yes, 16 destination okay. any service port and application. There are two columns, right? So an application I want to allow or deny telnet. Right and service is application default as I have discussed yesterday. Application default and then action is what allow okay. or maybe deny. Deny now what happens? <coughs> First packet comes here TCP sin packet. TCP sin will have IP header and TCP header. So IP header will have like source IP address, destination IP address, TCP header, bare minimum source port and destination port. If your destination port is not 23, so definitely this SYN packet will not be allowed to pass through the firewall because policy states that telnet is allowed. So the first matching criteria would be service port and the service number must be default, default service number, right? And telnet uses TCP port 53, correct? TCP port 53. <coughs> it means the first matching criteria is service port number. But <coughs> so definitely uh, if port number is not 23, so it doesn't match this rule. It rule match in Nikarega. Like in other port 23 here. So generally match Karega, allow ya deny Jobi am logya pax and define Karenge. According to that. Or traffic will be controlled like either allowed or denied because this match kar gaya on the basis of destination port. But my point is, okay, let's say uh, destination port is 23. Telnet, let's say it's allow condition here, not deny. Port number is 23. SYN packet goes to the destination. Destination responds back with the SYN act and then the third acknowledgement packet from client to the server. Once TCP connection is done, then we will send client will send the telnet data. So maybe client must have been used some tactics in order to change the port number, which is port hoping mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. Basically port number is 23, but generally it's not a telnet traffic. Let's say client or the user uh, has adopted some illegal practice or maybe some tactics to bypass the firewall, right? And if client knows that telnet port 23 is allowed by the firewall, means telnet is allowed or 23 is allowed. So definitely uh, client will try to, uh, uh, you know, like change the port number, maybe 23. But <coughs> when the telnet packet comes here onto the firewall, now this packet will have payload in it. It means will have IP header, TCP header, and data portion in it. Now firewall will look at the layer 7 data. Ki primarily, yes, it looks like the telnet traffic because it uses TCP port number 23. But is it really telnet traffic or not? So for that, to verify that, to identify that specific application, deep inspection inside this application data has to be performed by the firewall. So firewall will look at the layer 7 header here, will compute the signature of application. Already firewall has signature of a lot of applications, approximately 2800 well known applications matches that okay, whether is genuinely telnet or not. Let's say later on after three way handshake firewall comes to know that it's not telnet traffic, even though it has destination port 23, but it's not telnet traffic. Then what happens will be denied here. But you deny Kavua after three way handshake. So my point is <coughs> service port is taken into account, right? Primarily. So the first matching criteria is definitely service port number, but not necessarily uh, uh, if there is service port number 23, that means uh, it's always telnet traffic. If port number is, let's say uh, I have allowed HTTP port 80, 
राइट हमने वेब ट्रैफिक के लिए एस टी डी पी पोर्ट एट्टी अलाउ कर दिया बट जरूरी नहीं है कि जो भी पोर्ट नंबर एट्टी पे जा रहा है वो प्रोटोकॉल एस टी डी पी ही हो कोई भी क्लाइंट अगर स्मार्ट क्लाइंट है स्मार्ट यूजर है सो सिंस देर आर लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट वेज लाइक पोर्ट होपिंग प्रोटोकॉल होपिंग टर्निंग इन साइड एनदर प्रोटोकॉल सो विद हेल्प ऑफ एनी इवेजिव इवेजिव टैक्टिक्स मे बी क्लाइंट और यूजर विल ट्राई टू बाई पास द फायर वाल सो इवन इन केस ऑफ एनी टैक्टिक्स लाइक पोर्ट होपिंग या प्रोटोकॉल होपिंग इज द वेरी फर्स्ट पैकेट लाइक आई पी एंड टीसीपी टीसीपी ओल हैव डेस्टिनेशन पोर्ट एट्टी सो फर्स्ट इंप्रेशन इज वॉट इट लुक्स लाइक एस टी डी पी ट्रैफिक वेब ट्रैफिक एंड फायर वाल हैज अक्योरिटी पॉलिसी टू अलाउ वेब ट्रैफिक सो डेफिनेटली विल अलाउ टू पास थ्रू बट वॉज टीसीपी कनेक्शन इज डन थ्री वे हैंड सेक इज कम्प्लीटेड एंड एस टी टी पी रिक्वेस्ट कम्स हियर अन टू द फायर वाल एस टी टी पी रिक्वेस्ट सो एस टी टी पी रिक्वेस्ट विल हैव डेटा इन इट लाइक नाउ दिस एस टी टी पी रिक्वेस्ट इज समथिंग लाइक दिस आई पी टी सी पी एंड देन हियर डेटा पार्ट सो नाउ पालोल टू फायर वाल विल इंस्पेक्ट डेटा पोर्शन टू डिटरमाइन द स्पेसिफिक अप्लीकेशन दैट it is really http traffic yeah, yeah. or not yeah. because destination port 80 is giving the first impression that yes might be http traffic now let's say yeah. after inspecting this data traffic firewall comes to know it's not http then what will happen will be denied this but the point is ki shuru ka jo three way handshake tak hua usme to ek tarike se ye firewall as a legacy firewall hi kaam kiya legacy firewall means controlling traffic on the basis of destination port number no use of app id app id is taken into account after three way handshake to sawal hi uthta hai ki jo three way handshake ho gaya usme to firewall ka resource use hua fir aur wo hum log control bhi nahi kar payenge lekin if i talk about udp based application udp based applications to usme aise koi problem nahi hai because udp based applications mein ye UDP based applications. So here, my point is, applications are identified. Sorry, same it way. अरे नहीं जो मैं खींची है ऐसे कि after three way handshake. That is connection establishment. Connection establishment. All is well. All is well. and here udp based applications udp based applications so uh, excuse me sir ha huh, yes sir please so it means like uh, if in case of the tcp based application whether we are uh, allowing or denying any application any any application the control mm. uh, traffic will be there like the three way handshake and then mm. after that the traffic will be allowed or denied based on the policy Hmm. Um, you, you may uh, put that in in, the, in this way. I may be uh, in different way like uh, <coughs> TCP based applications can also be controlled, but only on the basis of their destination port number, right? Destination okay. port so number. So what? Which like, is ABR application firewall? So what? Like if we can do like uh, if we can uh, uh, put in in service we can put like port number twenty three and in application we can we put telnet and then we are denying. So in this case also the TCP connection will be there or not? Yes, TCP connection will be there, and okay. that's exactly the point. What I I want to uh, put here mm-hmm. that if let's say I have created a security policy in which uh, I have defined that uh, mm-hmm. application is telnet, right? Mm-hmm. Application is telnet, which right. is uh, has to be allowed, and service port number is twenty three, uh-huh. which is basically standard port. Right. So security policy states that uh, uh, please allow telnet application if it is running on the standard port number twenty three. So now what happens uh, <laughs> during three way handshake process only port number will be taken into account right, right. only port number mm. so yes primarily the first impression is what port number 23 that means uh, maybe telnet traffic so like uh, why is not why, sure, like, wo, uh, why we are uh, establishing the three way handshake when we have to deny the traffic uh, because uh, because that's good question but because uh, the reason is very clear and it's very obvious because three way handshake means 
if we capture the tcp packet <coughs> so the very first packet tcp packet which is sim packet has only ip header and tcp header in it right the very first packet and tcp header means tcp attributes like source board destination board acknowledgement windowing and other parameters ip means source address destination ip address and there are some other attributes here so since the very first packet like which is tcp sin message has only ip and tcp header so any firewall not only palo alto any firewall cannot identify application by uh, using or applying signature a protocol decoder the only way to identify this application is on the basis of port number to jo question tha ki if firewall has to deny telnet right are allow telnet so why not the like from the very first packet right. because the first packet has not data in it that's why isme data part nahi hota hai nee, and application id works jab here. jab firewall ne identify kar liya hai ki bhai ye telnet ka traffic hai aur mujhe telnet ka traffic drop hi karna hai to fir उसको आगे भेजना ही क्यों है वहीं पे वहीं पे उसको ब्लॉक कर देना चाहिए पहले ही हाँ तो अगर एग्जैक्टली exactly, अगर इफ इफ लाइक समथिंग लाइक पोर्ट नंबर हियर लेट्स से टीसीपी के अंदर डेस्टिनेशन पोर्ट नंबर है डेस्टिनेशन पोर्ट नंबर राइट इफ डेस्टिनेशन पोर्ट नंबर इज नॉट 23 लेट्स से हमें टेलनेट को अलाउ करना है या डिनाई करना है एनीथिंग राइट टेलनेट को हमें अलाउ या डिनाई करना है सो इट इज ट्रू दैट द फर्स्ट मैचिंग क्राइटेरिया इज द पोर्ट नंबर सो लेट्स से अ पैकेट कम्स हियर एंड डेस्टिनेशन पोर्ट नंबर इज नॉट 23 ओके इज नॉट 23 तब तो वो डिनाई हो ही जाएगा राइट तब तो बाय डिफॉल्ट डिनाई हो जाएगा हां बिल्कुल है क्योंकि पोर्ट नंबर इज नॉट 23 बट माय पॉइंट इज इफ द डेस्टिनेशन पोर्ट नंबर इज 23 देन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ पोर्ट नंबर एट लीस्ट दिस विल बी अलाउड टू पास थ्रू ओके बिकॉज़ इट मैचेस द सिक्योरिटी रूल बट वंस टीसीपी हैंडशेक इज डन and the very first packet comes here onto the firewall mm -hmm. so that might not be the telnet traffic okay. okay so what will happen then firewall will have to drop those packets as well right so now <coughs> since next generation firewalls matches uh, match both service port number and as well as okay. application id i have id so my point is that application id can be uh, applied only uh, if firewall receives a packet with payload that is with the data in it there has to be data portion in the payload uh, like in the packet if that is the case then yes firewall can apply signature and identify the application okay is that the yeah. sense now yes yes, yes okay yes, But, and exactly i have uh, written the same point here uh, so applications are identified after three band sync that is connection established and udp based applications are identified from the first packet because the first packet acha udp mein aisa nahi ho raha because udp means the very first packet will have uh, ip tcp and as well as ip udp and data ha yes it has no session establishment exactly no three band sync so because tcp is connection oriented and udp is connection as protocol that that is why right. 